In the heart of Italy, the city of Florence hides a history, shrouded in darkness and painted with violence. Often celebrated as a beacon of art and culture, Florence is an architectural marvel, a testament to the genius of the Renaissance and the birthplace of masters like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. But do not be deceived by the gentle brushstrokes and the grandeur of its edifices. For beneath its artistic facade, Florence harbours a secret. A secret that takes us on a journey through the labyrinth of time, where the city's brightly painted past gives way to darker hues. This is a tale of power and intrigue, of bloody conflicts and political machinations that have left an indelible mark on the very soul of this city. Beneath the grandeur and the beauty, Florence has a past that whispers tales of darkness and violence. Stay tuned as we peel back the layers of time to reveal the dark veil of Florence. Our Florence's dark tale begins in its early history, filled with power struggles and internal conflicts. In the heart of the 13th century, Florence was a battleground. The city-state was ensnared in a bitter feud between two factions, the Guelphs and the Ghibellines. The Guelphs, generally the wealthier class, supported the Pope, while the Ghibellines, often the nobility and knights, pledged their loyalty to the Holy Roman Emperor. This wasn't merely a political squabble, it was a feud that spilled blood on the cobblestone streets, a feud that tore families apart and incited violence and chaos. The city was a chessboard with each side plotting, scheming, always strategizing their next move. The Guelphs and Ghibellines didn't just fight for power, they fought for control of Florence's soul, each believing that they held the key to the city's prosperity. Yet their constant fighting led to nothing but destruction and despair. But the struggle for power wasn't confined to the noble houses. No, it seeped into the very fabric of Florentine society. The common people, tired of being pawns in the nobles' game, began to rise. They formed guilds, associations of artisans and merchants who sought to protect their interests and secure their place in society. These weren't just groups of craftsmen, they were a force to be reckoned with, a new player in the political arena. The guilds emerged as a third power, challenging the traditional authority of the nobles. They were the voice of the people, a beacon of hope amidst the turmoil. Yet their rise was not peaceful. Conflicts erupted between the guilds and the nobility, leading to further violence and strife. Florence was a city on the brink, a city teetering on the edge of a precipice. These early struggles set the stage for a period of darkness that would engulf Florence. The city's early history was not one of peace and prosperity, but one of conflict and discord. It was a time when power was sought at all costs, when the line between right and wrong was blurred, when the city's future hung in the balance. This was the beginning of Florence's dark tale, a tale that would unfold over the centuries, leaving a mark on the city's history and its people. The Medici family ascended to power, cloaking Florence in a veil of deceit, conspiracy and bloodshed. Emerging from the shadows of Florence's tumultuous political landscape, the Medici family clawed their way to the zenith of power. Their rise was far from noble. It was a twisted journey marred by cunning maneuvers, strategic alliances and a ruthless lust for control. At the heart of their empire was the lucrative world of banking. The Medici Bank, a financial behemoth, served as the lifeblood of their influence. It wasn't just a bank, it was a weapon a tool they wielded with deft precision to ensnare the city in their iron grip. But their reign wasn't unchallenged. The infamous Pazzi conspiracy stands as a chilling testament to the lengths their enemies would go to dethrone them. Orchestrated by the rival Pazzi family, this audacious plot aimed to assassinate the Medici brothers, Lorenzo and Giuliano. The conspiracy reached its bloody climax within the hallowed walls of Florence's cathedral, where Giuliano was brutally murdered. However, the Pazzi's victory was short-lived. Lorenzo survived, and the city, once lulled by the Medici's charm and charisma, erupted in fury. The aftermath was a brutal purge of anyone associated with the Pazzi. The streets of Florence ran red with blood, as the Medici's vengeance was exacted with unflinching brutality. Yet, despite the violence and treachery, the Medici's influence permeated beyond politics. 
They were patrons of the arts, sponsoring the likes of Michelangelo, Botticelli and Leonardo da Vinci. Their rule saw Florence become the cradle of the Renaissance, a beacon of artistic and intellectual enlightenment. The Medici's reign wasn't merely a chapter in Florence's history. It was a saga of ambition, power and survival. They were puppet masters in a city of marionettes, pulling the strings of power and weaving a tale of deceit and bloodshed. The Medici rule, marked by treachery and violence, left a dark imprint on Florence's history. The flames of the bonfire of the vanities cast a long, ominous shadow over Florence. As the flicker of the fire danced against the darkened night sky, a wave of religious fervor swept over the city, led by the charismatic Dominican friar Girolamo Savonarola. Savonarola, with his fiery sermons, began to wield immense influence over the people of Florence. He preached about the corruption and decay of moral values within the city, pointing fingers at the extravagance and vanity of the ruling class. His words resonated with the masses and he soon found himself at the helm of a religious revolution. In a drastic attempt to cleanse the city of its supposed sins, Savonarola organized the infamous Bonfire of the Vanities. This event saw the public burning of items associated with secular arts and culture, vanity and sin. Priceless works of art, books, mirrors, fine clothes and even musical instruments were thrown into the fire, a symbol of the city's rejection of worldly desires and a return to spiritual purity. But Savonarola's reign was not to last. The friar's radical reforms and his grip on the city began to loosen as the populace grew weary of his strict religious rule. His downfall was as dramatic as his rise. Accused of heresy and sedition by the church, Savonarola was arrested, tortured, and in a cruel twist of fate, publicly executed in the Piazza della Signoria, the very place where the bonfire of the vanities had taken place. As the flames consumed Savonarola, they marked the end of a tumultuous chapter in Florence's history. The friars' attempts to reform the city through fear and religious fanaticism had ultimately led to his downfall, and his execution only served to deepen the wounds he had inflicted on the city's cultural and artistic legacy. The bonfire of the Vanities and Savonarola's fall added another bloody chapter to Florence's dark history. The echoes of Savonarola's fiery sermons and the flames of the bonfire still reverberate through the narrow streets of Florence, a chilling reminder of a time when fear and fanaticism held the city in its grip. Today, the echoes of Florence's violent past still resonate within its ancient walls. As we meander through the city's cobblestone streets, we're constantly reminded of its turbulent history. The city's architecture, a spectacular mix of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque, serves as an enduring testament to its dark past, standing tall and proud, unyielding to the passage of time. Take the Ponte Vecchio, for instance. Today it's a bustling hub of jewellers, art dealers and souvenir vendors. But it bears the scars of a history marred by battles and bloodshed. In the 14th century, it was the site of fierce conflicts between the rival Guelph and Ghibelline factions, whose violent power struggles carved deep fissures in the city's social fabric. Then there's the imposing Palazzo Vecchio, a fortress-like palace that towers over the city. Its unassuming exterior belies a tumultuous past, filled with political intrigue, conspiracies and power struggles. It served as the seat of power for the Medici family, whose iron-fisted rule was often marked by violence and treachery. Every corner of Florence whispers tales of its dark past. Yet, it's this very past that has shaped its present, transforming it into a city of immense cultural and artistic significance. The city's turbulent history has inspired countless artists, writers and poets, their works serving as a poignant reminder of the city's resilience. In the face of adversity, Florence has managed to reinvent itself, emerging from the ashes of its violent past as a beacon of art and culture. Today, it's renowned for its stunning architecture, world-class museums and delectable cuisine, drawing millions of tourists each year. But as you wander its streets, take a moment to look beyond the picturesque facades. You'll find a city that's deeply rooted in its history, its past inseparable from its present. Every monument, every structure, every cobblestone tells a story. A story of strength, resilience and an indomitable spirit that refuses to be quelled. 
Florence, a city of undeniable charm, continues to captivate us, its dark past lurking just beneath the surface. As we peel back the layers, we uncover a city that's as complex as it is beautiful. Its history, a compelling narrative that continues to unfold. From power struggles to religious upheavals, Florence's history is a tapestry woven with threads of darkness and violence. We've traversed its early struggles and conflicts, a time when power was a deadly game and the stakes were high. We've witnessed the reign of the Medici family, their iron grip on the city, and their influence that reached far beyond its walls. We've stood in the shadow of the bonfire of the vanities, a stark testament to the city's tumultuous relationship with religion and power. Florence today, with its Renaissance charm and picturesque landscapes, stands in stark contrast to its violent past. This fascinating juxtaposition only adds to the city's allure, making it a captivating subject of study for history buffs and casual tourists alike. As we peel back the layers of Florence's past, we uncover a city that is as captivating as it is mysterious. If you enjoyed this journey into Florence's dark history, do remember to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing tales from the annals of time.